Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse, and in today's one of tutorial, learn about Julia 1.7. So, what is Julia? So, Julia is a high level, high performance programming language that combines the best of Python, of R, of C, of Fortran, of Lisp, all of them together to build a very rich programming language. And then it's very, very useful for scientific computing as well as general purpose programming. So, to get access to Julia, just go to the official website, julialang.org, then you click on this. So, the current stable version is version 1.0. And also use version 0.6 or 0.7. All of them are the same, but the but the version 1.0 is an upgrade of Julia, the previous versions of Julia. Okay, so that is one of the ways of downloading it. And also go to the downloads tab, and then it has support for all the major operating systems, which is cross platform. So you can download it for Windows, Macintosh, Linux, and then FreeBSD. So just click on it, and then you just click next, 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 then like that. Okay, so after installing this, you just go to terminal or your command prompt then you enter Julia. It's going to open the repo mode, right? Read, evaluate, print mode. The current version is version 1.0, which is very interesting. So that's one of the ways of running Julia. So you can run it inside your terminal or the repo mode. Also there's also other powerful IDs you can also use. We have Juno, which is a very powerful ID built specifically for Julia. It's built on top of Atom. So that is how to make this a tutorial on how to install it. And then there is also Jupyter Lab or Jupyter Notebooks. So Julia can be run inside Jupyter Lab. As a matter of fact, the JU in Jupyter stands for Julia. So that is one nice thing. So you can run it inside Jupyter Lab, Juno, or in any of the available IDs like PS Code, Sublime, and it has support for all of these things. Now let's see how to work with Julia. Okay. So there's a repo, this is an item, so I'm going to create a simple set, uh, file. I'm going to call it as the extension for Julia is supposed to be JL, right? So any name so I'm going to call it as our example dot JL. That is the extension JL. Let me position it well. Perfect. Okay. So let's work with Julia. So to create a comment in Julia, you just go with the hashtag, right? And then you go with the comment. So variable. And how to create a single line variable comment. Create a double line variable, just go with something like this. Hello, well, you can spell it's going to be let's say multiple line comments. This is a second line comment, right? Then to end the comment, you just go with the same thing back and then this. So now this off, right? And this is how to create a comment. So this is how to create a single line comment. Then this is how to create a double line comment. So now let's work with variable. So what is a variable? A variable is a name that is attached to a value, right? Any name that is attached to a value. So let's to create a variable in Julia. You don't need to declare something like var or something. Just go to the name. Okay, the name of the variable, then your value. So let's call it as hello Julia. So that is the name of my variable. So perfect is going to evaluate it for us in a nice way. So hello Julia. So that is a variable. So this is the name of the variable and then the value attached to it. So in Julia, if you put it in double string, right, double quotation, it's a string, but if you put it in a single quotation, it is a character. So if I do something like car, then I put something like this. Hello, this is going to give us, this is a character, this is going to give us an error. So this is supposed to be a character. So single quotes is for characters and then double quotes is for strings, right? So if I do it like this, this is going to be a character. Now let's see how to work with other methods of creating a variable the normal conventional way of writing a variable in Julia. So all variables must start with an alphabet or an underscore or a latest, right? So we, we cannot use something like an, a name like 4H. So I do something like 4H and I give it a number like 440. It's going to give us an error. So this is not the right way, but if I put it as an under, it's going to work perfectly for us, right? So this is another way of Okay, so it should never, should never start with a number, but it must always start with an alphabet or a latest. So let's see how to work with the latest format. So the latest format goes with the normal backslash and then your Greek alphabet or your latest stuff. So alpha, then tap, then go to convert it to the Greek alphabet, which is very interesting. So this is going to be hello alpha, right? Perfect. So this is how, how to do it. So just go with backslash. Then the value that you want to keep. So something like i 
is a normal pi then cap is going to give us a normal mathematical constant which is very interesting so let me comment this one out and also we can also use the latest for some of some other stuff like in case you want to give a uh, those emo emo emoji right? or emojis, you can just go with backslash, then column, then the name of the emoji. So something like hats, right? And then it's going to work perfectly well. So you see that I just converted it to an emoji. Same thing can be done for another one, like let's say Sunny. It's going to work perfectly for us. So that is very interesting, very nice in Julia. So in case you also want to, you have a normal mathematics example like S is to Three, and you want to put it at the normal correct way, right? You can also do it something like this go with x, then you go with your backslash, right? Then a back square, then two. Right? So if I use like that and I go with the tap, it's going to convert it to two for us, which is just like in case you wanted to do it like this. So that is very nice in Julia. So the yes, format is that let's do it another, another let's say a to the power three. Three, right, you want to put it it's going to be a then slash a, a slash then carrot or what, what do you call it? Carrot, right? Carrot, and then the value that you want to put there to two. Then click on tap, it's going to convert it to which is very interesting. So, this is how to do it. Julia, so Julia comes with all of these things inbuilt. You don't need to pack it, import any other thing to work with it. So, that is how to work with variables in Julia. Now, let's see how to output a variable. So how do we output our variable? You print out your variable. So you print it out. Right? So to output a variable, Julia has four different options of doing it. But we talk about three. So the first one is going to be print line. We're just going to print and give a new line, then print. We're just going to print and don't give a line. And then we have the show. And we also have print f, right? So all of these things are also supported in Julia. So how do you do all the difference between print line, print, and, print and show? So print line is going to print and give you a line. So something like print line. I give it like something like hello. If I go like this, it's going to print and give me a, a, a new line, right? But if I go without the print line, I go straight away with print. It's going to print without leaving a line. That's the difference between the print line. Now you can also use show, which is going to give it in an unevaluated format. So if I go with hello, it's not going to evaluate it, it's just going to give you the full stuff, which is quite interesting. So this one printed it out perfectly for us, but this giving us the full strength stuff. So that is going to print, show, and then print line. So that is how to do the output. There's also input. So how do you receive inputs, right? So in case you are working. So to receive input, the simplest way to use the read line. We can, we can also use the jump and all of this, but let's start with the read line. That is a basic stuff. In the previous version of Julia, you have to do STDIL for the for Julia 0.6, right? And apples. But in the current version, we don't need this. You just go straight away with it. So let's see what I mean. So if I go to this is the current version, let's exist this and then that's how to exist from it. Let's go with Julia 0.6. This is the old version. So in the old version, if I do something like read line, then I put in my value. Read line, right? It's supposed to be S D D I L. That is how to do it for the old format. The old version, that is 0.6. It's not old, but it's the previous version. Okay, so if I do something like hello, it's going to print perfectly for us. Right? But in the current version, we don't need to this is not in capital letters, this is in small letters. With the current version, is going to be like read line std standard input, right? So that is the current version. This is version 1.0. Okay, so how do you do that? So if I go something like this, let's give it as first name, then read line, read line. Then I'm going to give it as S T D I N. So if it's say if I put the name as Jesse, I'm going to print it perfectly for us. So that is how to work with the current one. In case you don't want this S T D I N, you can also do it anyway, like last name. And then we 
line without the SDDI. It's still going to work good. Oh, I made a mistake. Without the SDDI N, it's going to be class name, then read line. So if I go straight away with it, without the comma, or oh, without the SDDI, it's still going to work for us. J caress is going to work perfectly for us. So that is how to work with take receiving input. So thank you for watching this tutorial. If you have any question or contribution, you can just put inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit. And please don't forget to subscribe. Stay blessed.